subject of taping handlebars always, always lights up the comments section down below. And today, we're going to go and meet a man who is more obsessed about handlebar tape than even I am. Top or bottom, inside or outside. Let's go and find out exactly how you should be doing it. Right, so I'm joined by Ian of Team Sky, and I'm going to ask you the first question. Top or bottom, where are we going to start? <laughs> uh, you're talking about bars, right? I am, yeah. OK. <laughs> uh, as far as I know, I've never met a pro tour or like pro mechanic that wraps from the top down. Yeah. So as far as I know, and I've always done from the from the bottom of the handlebar up to the top, use bar plugs, finish with, in this case, matching electrical tape, or I've been on teams or use a contrasting color yeah. or something with a little splash to, you know, add a little personality to the bike. Yeah. Um, bottom to top, now, without question. Why wouldn't you start at the top? Because there's so many people out there who think you should start at the top. Now, personally, I would never start mm. at the top. Yeah. What's your reason for not starting uh, at the top? Well, for our reason on teams, the way these guys kind of use these bikes so intensely, it's the way it's the tape is overlapped means as your hand is going like this, it's kind of going with the flow of the overlapping. Yeah. And if you went the other way, actually the guys would be like kind of pushing into the overlapping yeah. and it would start to curl up. Yeah. And that's one of those differences of, you know, a guy rides five or six hours a day and it's more important that everything works the best, first of all, and looks are secondary, as opposed to maybe a recreational cyclist who rides one hour or two on the week and for yeah. them they're never going to kind of put the same miles or intensity on a bike and for them maybe they like the look of not having electrical tape yeah. at the top yeah. um, it doesn't, i don't mind the electrical tape myself but oh that's, i've uh that's all right isn't it yeah i've worked with teams where we've done like little logos or i would done we did little reflective strips okay so yeah. when uh photographers took pictures with flash you get a little like uh, pop there yeah. i did one team where we actually had uh national flags nice. little national flags on that if you find old pictures of a team I work for, you'll find uh, different nationalities of the flags on yeah. there. Um, so I always thought it was a place you could add a little flair. You know, you could blue on red, one side, red on the other. Yeah. You could do both, you know, yellow, I mean, something, but it's just sometimes an opportunity to provide a little personality to a bike Too as right. well. Now, what about direction then? Right, we're gonna start on the bottom of the bars. Yeah. We, we agree on that, yeah. which, is, which is always great. Yeah. Um, what direction are you gonna start wrapping in? Uh, of course, both sides, you always do them like a mirror image, yeah. first of all. And I always wrap, actually, I have to think about it, yeah. because you've, I've probably wrapped, you know, 10,974 bars. <laughs> so at some point, you're actually not thinking anymore. But I wrap to the inside, which then means at the top, you're wrapping towards the rider. Yeah. And a word that I kind of use for that is to combat throttling, mm -hmm. which is guys riding or climbing and twisting with their hands yeah. and like one place where you get into discrepancy is some people sort of think that guys will throttle on the bottoms of the bars to the outside so they'll yeah. wrap inside to outside and I generally see guys tend to throttle more on the tops yeah. so this way basically they're pulling the tape tighter towards them as they're climbing yeah. or doing this as opposed to if it were the other way you're doing this you'd actually be opening up the, the yeah. wrapping yeah. and that's a I don't know as far as I can tell it's about 50 50 between team mechanics of right. if you wrap to the inside or wrap yeah. to the outside that's interesting, um, yeah. but I would say like I said some guys will say oh but when they're in the drops they do this or I think it seems to be more on the tops they do that yeah. but it, I think that's kind of six and one half dozen of another yeah, I, think, um, I think the bottom bit personally is a bit kind of well, it depends really how much you ride on the drops. But on the top, yeah. I've, always, I've always done it backwards because you tend to just, yeah, when you're, well, you, when you're suffering. Yeah, yeah you're just, doing <laughs> this and like pulling yourself and you're yeah. doing that. And usually like sprinting or climbing, it's, I don't know, it seems like kind of a more positive grip and you're going more like that. Whereas you sit on the top and guys yeah. keep throttling back towards them. But I would say, I mean, the true test is if the bar tape doesn't come off. Yeah. I mean which for us obviously would never happen, but I'd say if it works for you going inside outside or outside inside, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. What about then the little, when we get the extra strips of tape in the packet, that yeah. they say wrap around, do you ever use them or not? No. No, just do the figure of eight. Yep, yeah. figure eight, you just pay attention um, to it, but no, that's another thing. I think it's, I mean, everything we do, 
is sort of based on obviously like kind of it working as well as possible. But at some point when you have you know, 10 bikes to do or 20 bikes to do efficiency, you know, if I can do a job five minutes faster yeah. and I've got 10 bikes to wrap, that's, um, yeah, yeah. I'm done, yeah, yeah, I'm done work, you know, faster. So for us, if you can do a figure eight smartly, you've just saved yourself that like cutting and like holding on and going around yeah. and all of that. You just boom, boom, boom. And we throw that stuff out, yeah. you know. And we spoke just now off camera, and I wish we were recording it actually, because it was that like, was it, the it, choicest it, moments it, were right there. It was. This is like the the, <laughs> the blandest stuff we ever said. <laughs> this is like the this is like the bar tape geeks. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, yeah. But you were saying that when you you know, used to work with people, yeah. sometimes you would check to see that they had cut the equal the, amount. Right. Of the, tape, the remainder the remainder pieces, because equal. obviously you have more bar tape than you need, so you yeah. you you cut off your little pieces and I always say like the best bar wrapping job both of those pieces should be equal length yeah. at the end so there we are but that's just a little silly thing I worked in a bike shop for a few years and would torture guys with that because I had <laughs> wrapped even at that point I'd wrapped a lot of handlebars you could like whip through it and you get the new guy who's like one side it's like this thick with cork tape and the other side it's super thin because he's got like I don't know one t-rex arm and one not strong arm and you'd be like dude come on like they gotta match when you when you cut your little remainder pieces off. Yeah. But that's that's just like a silliness. Yeah, I love it. Bar tape. I could talk about it all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> all kinds of other stuff, yeah. <laughs> the length of your scissors should be the circumference of the handlebar. That way you can cut the I end. Never knew that. that way the, you can cut that end piece in one snip instead yeah. of having to do several snips. Uh, cool. so, I, that's the one bit I don't like doing, is the angled cut. Well, that's why, you know, you over wrap it, you hold it straight, you have these long scissors, and then yeah. you just sight perpendicular to the handlebar. And if you have, like, long shears, you can, boom, ideally do it in just, like, one cut. And it's harder now that bars aren't round anymore. Yeah. But when it used to be smaller bars, if you got a good, like, dressmaker shears, that meant you could do it in one cut, and you didn't have to fiddle around with, like, snipping through. That's why I never thought about So it. that's why I, I hate short something. scissors. Yeah. That's why I always like to keep really long scissors. And boom, one cut. Once again, I just saved five seconds. Yeah. Boom. You know, over those 10,974 bars, if I save five seconds each, there you go. Yeah, I can't do the maths for that. I, I can't do math either. I'm, <laughs> I can do gears. And that's why I'm a bike mechanic. <laughs> so there we are. It doesn't really matter that much, which is possibly music to many of your ears out there. But what does matter really is how often you ride and whether or not you throttle or not. Let me know, though, as ever, how you wrap your bars down there in the comments section. And also, don't forget to like and share this video with your friends. Share it with someone who absolutely hates changing bar tape. Don't forget, too, to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. And me, well, I'm just going to go and wrap some bars just for the hell of it. <laughs>